Hello, my name is Titish Deshpande and I'm a research analyst at Kupinger Coal Analysts. And today I'm joined by Anirudh Sen. Um, hi Anirudh, do you want to maybe introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you Nitish. Uh, my name is uh, Anirudh Sen, um, VP Products here at Sabian. Um, and uh, happy to be on this webcast with you. That's, that's perfect. I mean, today's topic is also very interesting. It's third party access governance. And uh, I want to start by just there's, the, there's this question, is this really different from IGA? And uh, I mean, from my perspective, it, these are two related concepts, but there is difference between the, the focus and scope that is with third-party access governance. And third-party access governance uh, it deals with relationship with external employees as compared to IGA that we are known is more about internal employees. It's about identity life cycle management self service so in your view has has there been any uh, changes in third party access governance in the last few years or is it still the same that uh, it, that what i mentioned no i, th I think uh, you know the point that you make um, is is uh, great uh, yes um, you know there is a lot of similarities uh, between IGA uh, and third party management. I mean, the primary being that we are at the end of the day managing identities. But, mm -hmm. you know, at the core of it, there is a lot of difference in terms of the risk uh, involved with managing third parties. Uh, and um, if you look at some of the recent breaches that have occurred, uh, a lot of them have to do with uh, suppliers um, and their access being compromised, which then, uh, you know, affects the company itself. So uh, the two uh, key differences are that, you know, with third parties, uh, usually it is not centralized. A line of business will need to manage their own third parties. They have their own, you know, unique needs. Every department may want to outsource their work. Whilst with IGA, you still have like some sort of central HR source, you may, which may be regional uh, based on the country. But in, in third parties, uh, you know, the, the non-employee management, the risk is very, very distributed, right? Every department will need to decide whether they need, have a need for outsourcing, how they want to give access. So that risk is distributed. So that's one uh, key difference. Uh, second of all, uh, one of the recent uh, proposed rather SEC changes may actually bring third party into more uh, significant third party management because one of the proposed changes is that um, this may be uh, something uh, where every single company is required to report uh, on their third party relationships and how they are managing. That's that's the second thing. And third, like I mentioned, the risk uh, that you see with third parties is significant because you don't, uh, they, they may be remote, they may not be coming into office, you don't know if the other ones actually doing the work. So it's easy uh, to lose sight of that. So, yeah. I mean, completely agree with what you said that when it comes to third party, the risk is much higher. Um, yeah. and I mean, with third parties, you have a large number of supply chain as you have new vendors coming in. Yeah. And I think in the last couple of years, uh, we have seen that now organizations are trying to uh, increase their uh, resilience on supply chain and it's not not focused on just one geographical location but on yeah. many geographical locations yeah. and with that brings a bigger attack surface and also that means more cybersecurity threats and um, so yes that's that's definitely what uh, yeah. is happening in this current state and also with compliance we mentioned uh, with the SEC um, in sectors such as healthcare finance technology the regulatory requirements are evolving and it's important to uh, make sure that these third party vendors comply with that and all organizations also comply with that and yeah, uh, yeah so I mean, I mean it's more about sometimes uh, I, organizations r rush into selecting a vendor but i think that's one of the risks that they need to uh, they can avoid easily that they should do better due diligence of the vendor do better risk assessment um, right. and I think that is one of the easy way to tackle the risk associated third party. But um, yeah. when it comes to the benefits that customers see after applying third party, what are the benefits that you have uh, uh, seen in your experience? Yeah, so I think, again, you know, I think the motivations uh, for, uh, you know, every customer, you, you rightly pointed out, like some of the recent trends that you've been seeing, the motivations for customers to really pick 
uh, a solution or the need that they identify is, is very different. But I think ultimately, uh, you know, the benefits that we provide uh, on the customers that see with our solution, I can kind of sum it up in, um, you know, three uh, broad areas. Number one, you land up with a single source of truth uh, for all third party relationships, a single source of truth. So I, I you know, you published a few, um, you know, articles and research on this as well. And most companies don't know, uh, you know, if I had to tell a company, hey, um, what's your, uh, what is the inventory of your third party users? Uh, most companies will not be able to give an accurate number or, you know, figure. So that's the first benefit that customers see with that. Um, second of all, uh, is that we make it easier for customers to collaborate with third parties. There's a reason customers are outsourcing work, right? Mm -hmm. um, or have a need for non-employees. So I, I don't want to just limit it to contractors or suppliers. It could be, you know, machine IDs, et cetera, that they are um, using and we would kind of fall into the same bucket. But uh, what happens is that you want to make it extremely easy for uh, somebody to uh, collaborate with uh, suppliers, vendors, and third parties without introducing risk. So that's the second benefit. Like, how do you invite them? How do you bring them on board? You know, get them productive on day one. Um, and then the third, but not the least, I think this is the most important thing, is that you enable lines of businesses to really own their own third-party relationships and risk. So these are like, uh, you know, if I were to sum it up, these are the three uh, you know, benefits and of course, you know, regulatory uh, and compliance needs and other mm -hmm. things, you know, come without, you know, uh, you know, without mention, but, but these three are the main things that customers see uh, in terms of benefits. And um, yeah, and, and um, I'd also like to, you know, hear from you as well in terms of, uh, you know, what do you feel are, you know, steps that customers can take? You did mention, um, you know, vendor uh, selection, but you know, anything else that you're hearing in terms of what customers are doing um, in the, to manage a third party ecosystem? Yes, definitely. I mean, it's, it's evolving right now and uh, we are seeing better encryption protocols being put in place. So preventing data breaches, data leaks, and we also have uh, better access controls. So we avoid unauthorized access to vendors who are not going uh, not going to need that level of access and another thing which we also see is that when it comes to third party most of these third parties that are in here they are for a limited period of time and what in large mm -hmm. organizations it's so complex to have a uh, have good management of this vendor ecosystem but sometimes when some vendor leaves some third party leaves the accounts still exist in the organization. There's not good account termination methodology still in place. So that's one thing which organizations can focus on is addressing uh, real time, maybe account termination and uh, uh, making sure that we can avoid the, any issues of unauthorized access. So th these are some steps which we have also seen that customers are taking to make sure that they can provide a better third party governance uh, to the framework. And um, I think one of the major changes that is coming soon, it's quite evolving very fast, is the integration of AI and automation and machine learning. And yeah. it's uh, it's becoming a challenge now to secure this autonomous world. Uh, and yeah. more and more companies are now moving towards digital transformation or an AI machine learning and these new trends. But that means then I think we will have a bigger uh, attack surface as well, right? So, and uh, what I also have observed is that when you, everyone is rushing towards automation and AI, but AI automation, I think it's currently lacking contextual understanding. You know, sometimes they do not, uh, do, do not have the exact critical decision making that we humans have. So is that yeah. something also yeah. that you have seen when it comes to AI automation? Yeah, no, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's a great point about, um, you know, the AI. Everybody's jumping on it. We need to adopt it. But nobody's thinking of, hey, what risk does it introduce? Because it will always come after the back. Two years later, we will have research papers coming out and say, hey, this is what we should have done. And uh, we need to get ahead of the problem. Like any anything that is on the bleeding edge, uh, you know, of technology, you know, always is going to move us forward. But we need to uh, make sure that we are not introducing any net new risk. Uh, so I think we need to tread with caution. So completely agree with you, uh, you know, over there. 
And uh, and when it, when it comes to let's say Saviant, so yeah. what is Saviant? Uh, you know, offering its offering its customer when it comes to third party governance. So are you also aware of all these issues and you're helping your customers or do you have a different approach for the next six, 12 months or how is it you're doing? Uh, you know, it would be um, kind of very naive to say that uh, we have all the problems figured out. What we are doing is that uh, we are taking a very, very close, hard look at what's happening in the market and in industry, you know, regulatory changes surrounding, you know, third party ecosystem. You know, but ultimately what we are seeing is that uh, as far as our solution goes, there is a lot of traction with our customers, right? Uh, we have lots of customers who are large enterprises going through, you know, mergers and acquisitions and, you know, transformation, like you said. And um, and we also have a lot of media companies, you know, like they see all of these industries where you are seeing a lot of churn. Like this churn may be introduced because, like I said, because of an m and or you have um, in the media companies, they constantly work with mm-hmm. like 90% of their user base is some sort of uh, contractor, vendor, what have you. And with these companies, when we talk to them, this is like the number one problem they're trying to solve. Like how do we make sure that we secure these uh, you know, non-employees? In fact, you know, we were recently having a user group with a higher education uh, you know, uh, sector. We have user groups. And uh, every single uh, customer was like, how do you manage volunteers? How do you manage alumni? They are not employees. How do you deal with that? So like, uh, you know, like, like I said, with, with our solution, um, we are really uh, looking at, you know, on the ground, what problems customers are having, which, which tend to be, like I said, like, how do you, uh, you know, bring these third party users on board? How do you collaborate with them? How do you maintain a single source of truth for them? Uh, you know, and, and third, how do you make sure that, you know, a department or line of business is able to do, uh, you know, securely collaborate. And because this is on a converged platform, Nitish, uh, as a user goes through life cycle changes, they don't need to walk away from the platform itself. Uh, if I were to take an example, you may have a, somebody, you know, there's a short term need uh, from staffing to hire somebody as a contractor. Mm-hmm. You bring them on board. Uh, you know, that you do that through an invitation, start with a third party product. Now, you know, you may need to give them privileged access to certain servers. You know, mm-hmm. what you don't want is to give them another tool. You could, but if when they say with a platform, now you can, they can easily access, a, 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 you know, a, a server and then we can go to put them through an identity verification process. Um, and then let's say that they are doing well uh, and you want to convert that to an employee. Now, in a traditional setup, you would need to now make this identity uh, transfer to the IGA system. So you have, right. in a traditional system, you go through, uh, you know, the same, it's very standard uh, life cycle of a user. And instead of three systems, now all of that stays within a single system. And then if they continue to be a third party, yes, we are still securely managing them, right? So our customers are definitely seeing, uh, you know, the benefit, but, you know, we are constantly working with them to see what, other challenges they are facing, you know, and 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 seeing how our solution evolves as uh, you know the world evolves uh, uh, with, with us. That, that's a very nice example that you gave about onboarding an external employee, that, which shows the convergence between third party and IGA solutions. And I'm very happy to hear that there's something going on in that space. So that's nice to hear. Um, yeah. Talking about, I think now the next step that we have like what what would be your advice to the organizations going forward when they want to implement third party or governance uh, is there any some pointers that you can provide no uh you know uh, again uh, you know it's a it's a great question first of all um and i think you know i will not uh, i will I, i'm i'm a i have been a practitioner for you know 15 years so i, I i'm, I'm going to put on my practitioner hat on and honestly you know, when it is the main thing I will advise customers uh, is that the problem is not the same as IGA. It is related, but it's not the same. And I think we need to understand what the problem is, is the first uh, advice I would give to customers. Uh, the second thing is a lot of customers I uh, ask, uh, why can't I just use my HR to, uh, why can I use my IGA? Well, you can, you can, uh, it, uh, you know, but it is not built 
to manage third parties, right? Uh, you, you, you know, we have a media customer, um, you know, who is using HR tool for managing third parties. The problem is you have centralized it and you have made it HR's problem to manage the risk. HR doesn't own the risk of managing third parties. Mm-hmm. HR has no um, relation to how, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, they have no benefits, nothing. So, so you kind of centralize the problem. So to advise, uh, you know, to, to, the advice I always give to my customers is like, you know, understand how you're managing your risk with third parties. Are you treating them any differently? How do you make sure that, you know, you're managing their contracts of the vendor suppliers and use the right tool for the job? Customers could, uh, you know, create their own uh, homegrown tool if needed, but they need to use the right tool for the right problem. And I think that's that's the main thing. And they need to stay ahead of these regulations that that are coming in as well. So, um, you know, uh, overall, um, you know, we are very uh, excited, uh, you know, because this is, like you said, a very, very uh, evolving, uh, rapidly evolving space. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we are one of the first solutions to the market. So, you know, um, uh, so, so we are definitely seeing a lot of traction when we talk to our customers about these problems. Yeah. Uh, that's really good advice from you. And I hope. So, uh, some of us who are listening to this, they can take something away from today's video cast. And I also like the point you made that, uh, providing centralized visibility. So, uh, that's quite important to provide a centralized solution that can provide visibility who has access to what, who has access to why, and who has provided this access as well. Yeah. So when you answer these three questions, I think you can go closer to providing a good secure solution to third party and organizations. So. Thank you, Andrew, for your time. And uh, absolutely, very, very uh, happy to be on the call. And Nitesh, if I may just end uh, the the call by saying that the second part is the hardest, which is the why. You know, third parties need to be onboarded. Uh, you know, and and usually that's a line of business. It's not not central. So I think that's the problem. But you've articulated really, really well. Um, and thank you for having me here today. Thank you.